Welcome to Lesson 37. Dave Hill coming at you. Thanks for tuning in. And thank you for uh, telling all your friends about the lessons. I know that uh, a lot of people are finding out about these and, and they're having a great time checking them out. So I appreciate that. And I hope to hear from you all real soon. I'm going to be doing an interview for a Guitar Magazine. It's going to be up in Korea. And I think you guys are going to enjoy learning some more about some of the background of uh, my music and where I come from and things like that. So check, check that out in your local music stores. All right, so let's talk about um, some other techniques that we can use for coming up with guitar parts. Uh, we've been focusing a lot on full chords and, and, and seventh chords, major, minor, and dominant, and, and we've talked about the cage system for a while. We've also been devoting some time to triad, uh, three-string triad shapes, because those kinds of, these kinds of triad shapes, like we're playing right here, really are useful for a variety of different kinds of uh, guitar parts. They sometimes really are neat guitar rhythms because you can move these small shapes around very quickly and you can come up with guitar parts based off these triads. I think uh, we've all heard this rhythm guitar part before and you probably recognize it right away when you hear it. that's catchy and that's instantly recognizable is because the triad combinations that I'm playing that are from the uh, classic Edgar Wainer song called Free Ride are creating a melody. The structures of these triads are instantly uh, creating a melody that you hear and it's the top notes of the triads that really create the sound of the melody. Right? So, and you can see from what I'm playing here, they're based off the simple shapes we've already been working on. We're going to show you a few more today in this lesson and put them together in a really neat example of a classic tune that, uh, that you might recall from years ago. So let's take a look at what we've got here. First of all, remember, remember, triad equals three tones, okay? What are the tones? The tones are root, third, and fifth not necessarily in that order not in that order mind you they could it could be in the inversion of those three notes it could be three five one or it could be one five three or if in this case five one three right or in this case it could be one three five as long as it's got those three notes it's called the triad and as we Still recall, it could be the combinations and duplications of notes. It could be one, five, one, three, five, one. You could double roots and thirds and fifths. This is still a triad, just like this is a triad. This is just a fuller sounding triad, whereas this is a, is a lighter, smaller sounding triad, but they're still just major triads. The minute you add an ex extension of a seventh, then it's called a seventh chord, okay? So, let's review the triads that we've learned. We've learned the triad inversion that has the fifth on the bottom, the root in the middle, and the third on top. And we've learned how to make that a minor triad by bringing the minor third down here. And we might have even learned a diminished triad by bringing the fifth down a half step. And we've got a cool major sound to a minor sound and even a diminished sound. So remember, it's built, built off the D shape, but if you want to make this a G form, then you simply find the root on the second string, and there's your G form right there, or your G triad. So if, let's say we wanted an E, there it is in the E chord. If we wanted E minor, let's say E minor to A minor, there it is right there, okay? So once again, what we're hearing on the top sort of becomes the sound of the melody of the chords. Right? So most people that hear that would hear a progression, but they'd also hear... 
top, it kind of sounds like a melody. Okay, so that's important when you're coming up with small triad parts like this. How, what do you create with the melody that's on the top voice of the triad? Okay, we've also learned the triad forms built off the inversion that starts with the root in the bottom, and then fifth, I'm sorry, the third in the bottom, then the fifth, and then the root on top. And you might review this and check this out and understand that it's part of this bigger triad shape. So we're just taking the top part of it and making a triad form. So we get major triads like this. We get minor triads like this. And even a diminished triad. Okay, so those, these are very useful. These are really, really good for that short, choppy kind of sound. The only tricky thing about these is making sure, since you're only playing three, three top strings, you don't want any notes on the bottom to ring through. So I have to really be aware of my muting. of my thumb hangs over double and, and dead is the strings. I gotta do that to keep it clean. Okay, now you'll see on the board behind me here, I've got three more shapes to talk about. Okay, and you'll recognize this shape as part of the form that we've seen attached to the A form triad. Okay, and we just get rid of the low root and we just simply use the middle three strings here or the upper middle three strings, and we get a major triad, a minor triad, and even a diminished triad. We do that. Okay, so together now with the combinations of what we've got here, we're going to be able to really create some interesting guitar parts now. Now, I can even tell you uh, that these triads are going to be uh, approachable in other strings too. I can play a major triad here on a lower set of strings. I can make it a minor triad here and a diminished triad if I want. But the fact is, for the guitar parts we're going to talk about today, we're going to stick to the top three strings because, generally speaking, the, 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 the bottom strings start to get kind of low and a little bit muddy, so we don't really come up with as many guitar parts on the bottom strings and the middle strings they're a little bit too dark and they get a little lost in the band situation. So we're going to concern ourselves with these three right here. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and talk about how we could put them in a progression. It's going to be a lot of fun and we're going to see how melodic these can be and used when they're used in combination with other things. So I'm going to put the board up here for you and uh, make sure that you can see Evil Dave here, right, right next to me here. And uh, let's take a look. It's I know it's kind of hard to see everything up there, but this is also a PDF that you can download. And this would probably be a good one to really download because you can see the writing on the board there. Now let's clarify what I've got here. I've got chords of the progression circled when you because the other things that you see inside are actually the smaller triads that we're going to be talking about. These are the chords that are happening in the progression and these are the small triads that we've been talking about that are going to happen uh, underneath or rather along with the chords of the progression. So let me just show you what's going to happen here. It's, you see it says here and it says D and the rhythm is actually one, two, three, and four, and two, two, so it's going to be like one, two, okay, so what exactly am I playing? Well, I'm playing one of the very same triads that, um, that is the result actually of taking this shape right here and going down one. I just want to clarify that. 